So there are some key elements uh, or uh, tips that you can follow in order to try and make uh, MVNOs more successful, not just um, new non-legacy MVNOs, but it also applies to MVNOs going back as it is experience that's been drawn from the last uh, 15 to 20 years of MVNOs. Tip one, setting up an MVNO, uh, whether that is in the IoT space or eSIM space or in the traditional space, uh, the first rule is to keep it simple. People always forget this and it's a phrase that is banded around, um, but the complexity of setting up a mobile service is huge, all the way from the SIM or the eSIM to provisioning, to, uh, to the HLR, to GGSNs, to configuring SIMs for a, a service, and then configuring data, um, setting things like service provider names. All of these things are extremely complex. And in a network operator, they not only have thousands or tens of thousands of people doing this, um, but they also have a complexity behind it, which a lot of customers find very difficult to deal with. Um, and the successful MVNOs over the last uh, 15 to 20 years have always made their launch products at least very, very simple. And that has numerous knock-on effects. A, it means they can get to market quicker. B, it means they can overcome issues with the technology easier. And finally, it makes the customer experience a lot better because uh, when a customer rings up with an issue, uh, a customer service agent can very easily be trained up quickly to answer a question on one or two very simple products. Whereas the equivalent experience in an MNO is that there are 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 different tariffs alone, and they need to be passed on to different people. And of course, the customer experience is not going to be as good for it. Tip two, planning ahead. Planning ahead is vital. Uh, mobile is extremely complex, and there's a lot of things that people have to overcome in order to get a product to market. And a lot of people think that that has ended with just choosing, for example, a billing system and getting a core network agreement or choosing their MVE. &E. But in reality, there are many other services that you need to enable everything from an eSIM to IoT or even just traditional MVNOs in terms of being able to configure the phones, enable to be able to configure the SIMs as you want them, to be able to uh, deliver new services. And all of these require you to plan way ahead, way, way further ahead than anyone would ever imagine and uh, never underestimate that complexity. And this is one of the reasons why many MVNOs um, or players in the IoT space didn't actually originally come from the telecom space because a lot of the telecoms is a lot simpler than mobile and um, these people often underestimate that and sometimes you can do better with people who come straight from, um, from a brand or from another area completely who will grasp that complexity and plan ahead sooner. Tip three, get on top of the SIM process sooner. Whether that is an eSIM or traditional SIMs, you need to get on top of this as soon as possible, especially with IoT, because you will only get one chance to configure a SIM in the field, and the customer may expect to consume that immediately, and you don't have the luxury of being able to uh, test the SIMs, reissue the SIMs, and go through various processes with them, which you do with traditional SIMs. And I just cannot say it enough to people to get on top of that process as soon as possible. There's so many times, project after project, people have said, don't worry, we can send, you know, we can do eSIMs. And they can quite often send eSIMs one, two, three, or five, or 1,000, or even 10,000 at a time. But when you're suddenly trying to manage the millions and millions and millions of eSIMs that can be out there in IoT, and the huge complexity of the distribution that eSIM involves, it, it, it can be hugely complex if you get that wrong. And the same even with physical SIMs. You know, they, they, they are complex, whether they're in a, in a microchip format this big, or whether they're in a nano SIM, or whether they're in the big SIM. They are very complex, uh, very complex tools and very complex products, and you need to get them right. And they almost desi deserve their own uh, track just to manage the SIM and get it done soon. Tip four, people. People are vitally important in uh, an MVNO uh, in order for them to be successful. And it's, it's not just about the right people, it's about their attitude and how they go about things. And quite often people make a mistake. For example, if you're going into IoT, you'll take somebody who used to run an IoT department in a network operator. But the reality of, is that, of it is that he or she had maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 people underneath him or her who made things happen. And quite often their approach in a network operator or any big organization can be very hands-off. Now, when you get into a, a small company like an MVNO trying to make things happen, whether it's in IoT or eSIMs or in, in the traditional space, that person has one of two options. They can either you know, say, I need to employ Anna and Freddie, who don't want to move in the first place, 
or they can ring them up, get their information, and then get their appropriate training, get the appropriate expertise, and, but more, most importantly is actually get on with it. And we see this, I, I suppose an extreme example is the successful sort of Kickstarter funds. You see one person who is the salesperson, the marketing person, the inventor, the creator, and the engineer, and the coder. And in an MVNO, obviously, you've got a, a much more complex product and you need more people, but those people need to be prepared to get their hands dirty and get involved and make sure that they work with everybody in the team and that they get something done without constantly saying, I need more resource, I need this person, I need another person. Tip five, listen, action, and adapt. It's, it's all very easy to start off with very good intentions, but a lot of MVNOs let those go and you see week after week very key elements that we um, have discussed all many times in terms of ordering sims early, getting on top of platforms, uh, planning for IoT, planning for provisioning. All of these things just can slip week after week and it's very easy to get into a situation where if one person says you're fine and you're on track but nine people are telling you they're not, that you hear it's fine. Um, or if you know, ten people are telling you you need to change the plan and adapt the plan um, and one of them is saying, no, no, we need to stick to the plan. It's very easy to say, let's just stick to the plan. And that is the easy way forward, but sometimes you do have to adapt. Um, but mo more importantly, you usually have to stick to the plan and listen to your team. It's okay having five good people who will get their hands dirty and get on with things, but if you only listen to one or two of them, then you, you're not going to be successful and you're not going to be able to action that plan or adapt to any changes in the market or to um, issues that you find as you're going along. If you want to know more about IoT in the MVNO space, come and meet us in the MVNO World Congress in Nice in April, where you can join the workshops, you can see the streams and network with people who are actually doing the IoT as well as the people who are talking about IoT. And I'll see you there in uh, Nice in April.